<coughs> vous disiez tout à l'heure. Earlier, you were saying that if we can't reach these people, that community work needs to be done. For example, those who work in harm reduction on the front line and have contact with these addicts and bringing them back to the social determinants of health. We noticed while traveling that there are stories that finish well, but they always start by supervised housing, so the person had a roof over their head or could use drugs in a supervised manner, and that controlled the use, and they had somewhere to stay, and progressively they were able to overcome the addiction. This path seems to be more lengthy, but is it more interesting to you than, for example, forced detox? Yes. Um, so the problem with forced treatment um, is, first of all, we don't do it for diabetes or hypertension uh, or rheumatoid arthritis or pneumonia. And that's because we want to preserve your autonomy for your health care. The problem with the, the underlying hypothesis of forced treatment is that it's a one and done. I treat you, you're better, you go home. That's not the case. When you're working on the sharp end of the stick like I am, you recognize that addiction or substance use disorders are a complex, wicked problem that involve not only health care, but the social determinants of health. And therefore, a simple, one single approach for all patients is never going to work because it's a chronic disorder. It's not an acute disorder. It's no different from managing diabetes. Right? We know what the problem in diabetes is, for example, which is insulin. We still can't cure diabetes, and we've known about insulin since 1922. So we can't cure diabetes. How can we hope that a single, quote-unquote, addiction treatment is going to solve a complex and wicked problem like addiction? So you have to start somewhere. As an ICU doctor, my fundamental job is to keep you alive. In order for me to buy you time, and me time to figure out what is actually going on and to come up with a comprehensive plan to look after you. It is no different on Murray and King Edward Streets. When somebody is addicted, my job is to keep them alive using a harm reduction approach. We use harm reduction in all aspects of our life. This committee just used a harm reduction approach when you made me go through security. You don't know who I am. You might be afraid that I might hurt you. So you, you have a harm reduction process that prevents me from doing that. Um, most of you probably drove here today or you had somebody drive you, right? But your car has harm reduction. Seat belts, anti-lock brakes, airbags. You put your seat belt on. Why would you do that? There are traffic signs. There are traffic laws that we all have to follow. And yet people still die from traffic accidents. I know because I look after them in the ICU. Thank but you, we Dr. don't ban driving.